And you're live, Madam Mayor, whenever you're ready. I still need to wait for the clerk. <laughs> And uh, we have a counselor that was chair a while ago. Back in round. So we do have Coral to start. He's gone, gone to the wash. I don't. Oh, it's Roly that's calling. He's locked outside. Or is locked outside. He's locked outside. but Joel's my hometown. Wait, wait. Uh, so I'm going to go third right now. The door was locked. It's coming on tight. Okay, so we are beyond six o'clock. So I decide to say that I'm here. I choose to be the special conseil. I take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this special council meeting. We have an agenda beforehand. Nous avons un autre, un autre, un autre jour devant nous. Et la première item, a-t-il aucune déclaration de conflit? Is there any declaration of conflicts? Hearing none, we move to the agenda. Is there a mover and a seconder to adopt the agenda? Councillor Chris? Yeah, can I ask a question also before we adopt it? Or do we do you need a move in a second first? I just need to ask a question first. She asked if you have we have any questions. Okay, I have a question. Well, first of all, let's uh, get the agenda, the motion read, and if you have questions, then we can address the question. But I still need a seconder to adopt the agenda. Merci, Yvonne. It is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Duhain. It resolved that the agenda for the meeting of the, of the council special meeting held on June the 9th, 2022, be adopted as presented. Are there any questions or comments? Kelsey, Chris? So, yeah, I have a question about the, just the setup of the agenda, specifically the closed meeting. So, you know, the, there's a lot of interest in this and it needs to be as uh, transparent as possible. And reading the ombudsman's report there, you know, section 51 right at the end, it really discourages that and says that, um, you know, uh, it, you got to recognize that you got to interpret the municipal act very okay. narrowly for the closed session. And, and and I'm just wondering, like, if we need that and and also sort of, I would have three, three things on the agenda, which would be an open session and they would be number one is what is the What's the process for voting? Number two. Okay, but if I may, of course, Chris, I potentially may be able to answer your question. We're going to go with the introductory remarks by our facilitator, the guest Mr. Um, Bell Chamber, that is amongst us. Now, uh, the memo that has been shared to all the members of council um, and was also posted on our website, we will discuss that. And though the concerns that you're identifying, the questions that you're identifying will be addressed uh, before we proceed, um, uh, before so, we proceed even to close or whatever. So, so but see, it, that should say close slash open or something like that. It says close, but, but it well, doesn't got the... Yeah. Okay. So if you... Uh, those are part I will of the, repeat my I've got more but don't. okay they're part of the memo that we got then no doubt there can be a lot of questions and concerns and probably um, modification or any amendments to what was being what was provided to council are you comfortable with that yep perfect okay so coming back to the resolution for the agenda are there any concerns any objections or any objection? Um, no. Oh, okay. Well, I was just asking if there was any concerns or objections. Hearing none, then it's approved. Adopted. 
So the opening remarks and process overview, I'll pass that on to Mr. Nigel Bell Chamber. However, what I would just like to note is the memo that we got stated that the candidates are here this evening because they submitted the interest. They have the opportunity to address council. They will be asked questions and Mr. Bell Chamber will explain that. But even though we proceed to number four, there's a probability that we're going to go back to number three, discuss the memo, and if you have any questions or any proposed amendments, which may impede or change number five and number six for this evening. Aucune question à ces fellows? Hearing none, um, I take this opportunity on behalf of Council uh, to say a big thank you to all the candidates that submitted their nomination for the vacancy of Ward 7. Un grand merci à tous ceux et celles qui ont postulé notre nomination pour le poste vacant pour le quartier numéro 7. And also, the objective of this evening, we have a guest who's been appointed by the province, by the minister, Mr. Nigel Bellchamber, who has been provided the task to work with council in filling this vacancy. So, l'objectif de ceci est d'arriver à un but ultime de combler le poste vacant pour le quartier numéro 7. Without undue delay, I'll pass it on to Mr. Bellchamber so he can provide us with an overview pertaining to the candidates that are amongst us this evening and the process. <coughs> Thank you very much, Your Worship, and good evening. And I'd like to start with my apologies to those of you who are more comfortable in French than English. Unfortunately, English is, I'm unilingual for all intents and purposes. So my apologies if that just causes any problems. But this is, uh, I'm always amazed in Northern Ontario how people can switch back and forth quite effectively just at the drop of the hat. So it's uh, somewhat embarrassing to those of us from the South when we spend time in the so, you should not be because we're not embarrassed to speak French anywhere. So. Anyway, <laughs> good, but good evening, members of council, uh, viewers on who may be looking on a YouTube and uh, applicants for this position. Uh, my name is Nigel Bell Chamber, and I'm here appointed by order of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing for Ontario to assist council with filling the vacancy on a council that's existed for nearly two years. Ministers directed that members of council fill this vacancy by appointment by June 30, or possibly face both political and personal financial consequences. When I first met with council two weeks ago, it decided to advertise for interested applicants. That was the first step in the process and there was no problem with it. And six of you are here tonight in that capacity and I thank you for offering your services to the community, each of you. It's, it's no small undertaking. I've taken the liberty of drawing your names in random order so that nobody has a, an unfair advantage of going first or last or whatever you might perceive uh, as being in order. And so I've already, I've already done that for a brief question period. There'll be three questions and I will pose the same questions to the same order to each of you. Well, again, I want to make sure everybody's treated equally as much as we possibly can Although obviously some of you will get to hear others give, give their answers. But I think the way we've phrased the questions, I think it will be, uh, you won't be repeating other people's answers necessarily. Following the interviews, your, uh, your interviews, council may attempt tonight to fill the position. I would hope that they do, however, Again, they have until June the 30th, but uh, the closer we get to June the 30th, the more difficult things can become in terms of meeting the minister's timeline and the, uh, and the exposure that it puts in place. If they can't meet tonight or reach a decision tonight for an appointment, then uh, they will have to defer to a special meeting to be held in the very near future. But since applicants have been known to members of council for several days, they've had opportunities, I think, to discuss it individually between themselves or with other people who may know 
you, or in some cases, even have a discussion with you. I think that uh, it would be preferable for everybody involved if the decision could be made tonight, because there's a lot on council's plate and there's a lot to be done before the end of this term. So, with no further ado, uh, the first on my random ordered list is Jamie Restoul. And if I pronounced your name correctly, um, I'm sorry, you, I'm not chairing the meeting. <laughs> no. If you have a procedural no, question, I have a procedural question. You it should address is. it to the mayor. Okay, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, I have a problem with uh, having the candidates sit here and listen to the other candidates. Uh, I have never seen that in all the years of my career, and I've done, I've done a lot of staffing. Yes. And that, I think, is against the principles of the whole interviewing process. I would recommend that we interview the individuals indiv individually and the other people stay in the waiting room and wait. It's my recommendation. Okay. Your Worship, if I might respond to that. Yes, if, if you may. If I had that same concern. I do a lot of interviewing. In fact, I spent eight hours interviewing candidates for position history. Uh, the unfortunate part about it is that council cannot exclude members of the public from an open public meeting. You can't automatically say, you person X cannot be at this meeting. If five of them wish to leave when one of them comes to the table, uh, they're quite able to do that. But you have no capacity to in or exclude them from an open public meeting. I know it's awkward, it's the way the law is written. And I can't recommend that you go against the law. And if I may also add, uh, you have the technology. The meeting is open to the public. Yeah. It's being live streamed. Uh, you exclude some participants and remove them yeah. from council chambers. Who's to say that they're not, well, you know, listening on live stream? So either way, I think- I still have a problem. Well, Your Worship, this isn't the, an application for for a position like an employment position. That's this correct. is a political position. And all campaigning for political position is done in the full light of other candidates and members of the public. That's the principle we're dealing with. <laughs> so that's the other thing that I, that I was concerned about and thought about. Um, I understand that, that it may pose an advantage to some, depending on the order, and that's why the selection on random order conversion. I think we're all here to do some teamwork. Yes. But you know what? I can't open the um, the guests that are here who are not to partake in the discussion of council. So, I apologize. not to be rude. But I wish for some cooperation. Well, I, 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 would, I do understand the fact if we were, I did the interview for 30 something year or two, if I might have a little bit of experience in uh, doing interview, and I would not have never had. Uh, uh, five candidates at the same time, but it's political, like you said. When we attended candidate night, uh, Councillor Dan, you were all there. The same question were asked to all of us, who are very different, and said that helped some people, and that uh, some people for them, well, like that was uh, they were supposed to answer, so they had to change their. So I think it's uh, we're not it's not the same concept at all, and I feel that uh, if they could not take that tonight, well surprise so we do need to be treated like every person that would put their name to run for four years so i i would support that we keep like that but that's the law anyway so well um at this point uh, it's a valid concern and we receive the advice according to the legislation we're not in a position due to the fact that we're in an open meeting to exclude that uh, the participants that are here from participating in being so I'll pass it back to Mr. Thank you. to be able to Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. The first one I drew from the list was counselor or not counselor, excuse me. Okay, we go home now. Maybe rest stool if I pronounce it not properly. Please come forward and take the uh, a hot seat. Thank you. So it's three questions, okay? And it shouldn't take more than about 10 minutes at the most to answer the three questions. And a couple of them are 
pretty straightforward. Third one may require a little thought. One of the three. First one is tell us about yourself and your connection to the Sturgeon or to the West Nipissing community. And just to, if I can ask a question before we start, how long do we have for responses? I would think no more than five minutes per response for each question. So in total, 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you. So for your question, I'll, I'll just skim over. I provide, I've made some notes Absolutely. before we started. But uh, yeah. just for myself, I, I wanted to thank Mayor Savage and the members of council who are here and, and online for the opportunity to put my name forward. I'm here today, obviously, to express my interest in the vacant council seat for Ward 7. And I believe my experience, qualifications, and commitment to our beautiful municipality make me the ideal choice to fill this vacancy. As we navigate through the remainder of this council's term, it's important to have someone in this seat who knows and understands the policies and procedures, a team player who puts our community issues first. I would bring over 11 years of political experience to the table, having been a previous councillor on this uh, municipal council and i've sat with many of you uh, during those years um, I've, I've heard you know discussions amongst uh, councillors amongst other candidates and uh, just with respect to the public posting of this evening's uh, proceedings i'd expect that you know where someone resides would pay, play probably a smaller or I'd expect them to play a smaller uh, significance in the selection process the uh, Opportunity was extended to everybody within the municipality, regardless of where you were located. And if that's a strike against you because you live somewhere else, I think that's a little uh, unfair in the process. Um, issues in Ward 7, uh, touching on that point, would not be given any less importance at the council table, whether the representative resided there or not. Uh, I'd ask the question, when it comes to issues within Ward 7, we've had uh, long-standing issues with boil water advisories and burner that have been over the years. That's an issue within the community. With the emergence and hopefully emergence at the end of this pandemic, there's going to be influences uh, with higher fuel and supply costs. It's a great uh, agricultural community and I think there's going to be a need to advocate for the people of uh, Ward 7 in the agricultural community to move forward to help them as we uh, fin hopefully finish off this uh, pandemic we're in. Um, and then talking about where people live and where they are, are on council, I believe right now there's a council member who isn't currently residing within the ward that he was elected to. But that doesn't mean that that ward isn't getting the service that, that was always there for that municipal councillor who was there. And in previous councils, we had other individuals who resided in the Sturgeon River and were representing people from Ward 5 and Field. And there was no issues there in terms of the people there getting their issues addressed and issues moving forward. Uh, since the last election, I've remained active in our community. I currently serve as the Vice Chair of the West Nipissing General Hospital, and I also uh, serve as a member of the Health Professional Recruitment and Retention Committee. Uh, outside of our community, I'm a member of several communities at the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, the new Nawson U. I'm a member of the Indigenous Reference Group there, as well as a member of the Selection Committee for their first Nawson Board of Governors that's coming up this fall. As we all know, shortages with health professionals is something that impacts our community and having strong ties to NOSM is definitely an advantage as we navigate through this difficult process and challenge. Uh, personally for myself, I've been employed for the past 24 years by the Anishinaabeg Nation. It's a political organization that represents 39 First Nations across Ontario, including our neighboring municipalities in Dokis and Nipissing. In my role there as Director of Health, my focus is on supporting First Nations in the area of health mental health and addictions, policy development, and access and funding through negotiations with federal and provincial uh, representatives, as well as managing a budget of nearly $20 million per year. I'm well versed in terms of how uh, the impacts of budgets are and, and dealing with larger budgets as we have here within the municipality. A uh, couple more quick points. My education is in the area of public administration and governance, and I've always believed in strong policies, process, and procedure. I believe this ideology, and I bring this ideology to the table, and I had during my previous 11 years on council, would do the same for the remainder of this term. Thank you. So here's the second question. You're well aware that the current eight members of council have frequently been deadlocked into two camps on a number of important issues for the last term. What can you tell all of the members of the council that will encourage them 
that your appointment would not automatically tip the balance to 5-4 uh, on each of the issues or the types of issues that have been dealt with before. What can you reassure? How can you reassure? Thanks. Like I mentioned, uh, background in policy and governance. I understand the, the procedures that are in place and policies that council are governed by. Um, my approach when I was a, a councillor in the past was to always focus on the issue itself and not to focus on individuals who are speaking about the issues. I think when you hang your hat coming into council chambers and look at the paper in front of you and focus on those issues themselves, it's a very productive way, in my own opinion, um, to get through the difficult dis discussions and decisions that have to take place. Uh, coming into a, a situation where, you know, it's a 4-4 vote in many occasions, my approach would be to look at the paper that the issue is written on, think about it, if I need to speak with constituents about their thoughts on it, and then come to the table to make decisions that are in the best interest of everyone. I, I, I guess my bottom line in, in that type of question is, you really have to take the personality out of the issue that you're speaking about, and at the same time, you have to make sure that we keep moving forward as a municipality. I've witnessed some of the meetings, and it's difficult um, you know, to see issues not progressing forward, as they should be. And I think everybody around the table, uh, like, like one of the colleagues back here mentioned, it should be a team. Everybody has their, their part to play on the team uh, to do their best part that they can. They bring different skill sets uh, from different approaches around the table and just work uh, as cohesively as you can. It's, it, I definitely am not uh, looking at coming into the situation to say I'm backing this side or I'm backing this side. <coughs> we need more teamwork. That's, that's what I think needs to take place. We have to start focusing on the issues at hand, uh, respect the procedures that are in place, and move forward. Okay, thank you. Tell us about two or three issues facing West Nipissing Council that they need to address before the new council takes office this fall, in your opinion. They may not solve them, but they need to, they need to seriously consider you made reference to that, I think, in your opening remarks. Yeah, I, I mentioned a couple. One was the uh, the, the drinking water issue. Um, you know, and, and I'll fall back into my professional experience. I deal with First Nations. We have not necessarily within our area, but with some in the far, far north. And you talk about boil water advisories that have been standing for 20, 25 years. And it's not, it's, it's almost incomprehensible that it's still happening. But, uh, you know, translating that to our municipality here and, and Seeing the notices that come out from the public health unit on, on boil water and burner, I mean, we're, we've been established for how many years and it's, it shouldn't be happening. There needs to be some uh, solutions in there and not band-aid solutions if it means, uh, you know, big infrastructure and replacing water treatment or building a line from Sturgeon Falls to Burner to help the water situation. I mean, every kid in Burner deserves to be able to walk up to the tap and take a glass of water and not worry if, if there's uh, sickness at the bottom of the glass. I think that's one of the issues we could really start pushing forward for uh, that board. And I mentioned about we see rising costs uh, all over the place. Fuel, obviously, is is one of the big things. But I know for the agricultural community, supplies, so they can, uh, you know, either with their crops or with their, uh, you know, animals, to make sure that they are uh, have as much support as they can. And I know governments are issuing some levels of support. Uh, I think part of us, whether it be through delegations with province or in some cases the feds, but probably mostly the province, uh, need to take a step forward for our uh, agricultural community and make sure that they're in good shape moving forward. Um, we're coming to the end, hopefully, like I mentioned, of the uh, pandemic, but uh, moving forward, um, we need to make sure that there's long-term sustainability and supports for uh, those individuals who uh, depend on that livelihood uh, for what they do. Uh, and, and if we're looking municipal-wide, uh, I think the issue of mental health and addictions is, is a big issue. We see homelessness uh, on the rise within our community. You can see individuals, unfortunately, that are uh, suffering from, from that for whatever uh, reasons that they have for being in that position. Uh, but I think as a municipality, it's important to work with DSAB, it's important to work with the health unit, and again, to work with provincial, mostly provincial partners, uh, to see what we can do to access uh, and improve services that exist within our community. Um, you know, five months goes by quick. Um, and and to, to be honest, I, I, my thoughts are not to be here for a band-aid for five months. It's to start to be part of the team, to move forward. 
uh, transition from council year to uh, council or council term to council term. But uh, it's it's becoming an increasing issue. It's kind of, uh, I, I can't remember the exact phrase, but it's another wave of the pandemic and how it's impacted families and individuals uh, with isolation and with the social impacts of COVID. Um, we got to make sure that we try to be as uh, far in the forefront as we can uh, to make sure that our community members are safe and that we have access to services uh, and can assist them in getting the services they need to keep our municipality healthy. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's, uh, that's very helpful. If you noticed me looking at my phone, it wasn't because I was watching a game. I was doing a stopwatch. So just to make sure we have generations. <laughs> The next candidate in order is Fernand Pellerin. Am I taking a seat? I can't come close to following this. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, tell us about yourself and your connection to the West Nipissing community. Bonjour and good, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Fern, uh, Fernand Pellerin. I've been a long time resident of Werner and I am bilingual. Uh, as most of you know, I've been a member of the planning board since 2003 and also a member of the community, committee of adjustment since 2003. I am a, a member of the International Union of Operating Engineers owned the lodge for 18 years with my brothers and my father. I am an active member, an active board member for community living for 17 years and also a member of the finance committee for the last 17 years. I always attend my meetings, know what's on the agenda and like to participate. I wish to represent the people of Werner Board seven, as I lived there all my life. As a taxpayer, <clears throat> I also I also represent all the taxpayers of West Nipissing. I'd like to talk to people and hopefully resolve some problems. As I mentioned in my letter, I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to get the job done. All right, thank you. So you're well aware, you mentioned size, the current eight members of council have been deadlocked in two camps on a number of important issues for the last term, whether it be process or whether it be substantive issues. What can you tell the members of council that will reassure and encourage them that your appointment would not automatically tip the balance to 5-4 on those issues or types of issues? Well, to start with, uh, one way or another, it's going to be 5 4 because it has to. Or 9 0. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, so, the arising problem, most of them uh, we don't know. I, I, I don't watch uh, many of the meetings because I'm out of town and no, no, uh, no service for that. Uh, so I don't know most of the issues, but I know one thing, being on the planning board and on those committees for 18 years plus, I can make my own mind and I won't be uh, not bullied, but uh, pushed into something that I don't believe in. That's very good. So tell us about two or three issues that you believe are facing West Nipissing Council that it has to address before the new council takes office this fall. It may not solve them all, but at least has to start seriously discussing. I, I hate the repeating, but it's going to be the same issues as the, the rest of them. Number one, the water, the, when I see the brown water uh, once in a while on uh, Facebook and Werner, it's 
it's unreal in this day and age that we have this inverter. So the main thing, I don't know if the people are getting updates of what is coming or is it coming or is uh, somebody looking into it or not. So that's the main thing, at least keeping the people informed. The next thing for sure, it's the opioids. That's that second to second, if probably should be first. Uh, yes, that's my main. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that list? I'm not saying there needs to be more, but no. you have any minutes, certainly. No, and the, well, one of the things I would ask. I changed my mind about uh, 50 times <laughs> coming here or not. Uh, I'm thinking of running for council this fall. So I think this, this would be a good preview. Some people might not think so, but <laughs> it's good. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Uh, next, Larry. Good morning, Madam Mayor, and council members, and fellow candidates. Mr. Moran, thank you. Tell us about yourself, your connections to the West Nipissing community, and your connections to the West Nipissing community. I've been a resident of uh, West Nipissing since uh, 1970. Lived in Sturton Falls for many years and, and in Werner and back into Sturton Falls. I am currently em employed by Nipissing District Housing under uh, DSAP. Um, I've uh, been on boards before. Uh, I, I worked on as a director with uh, the Subreys, West Nipissing Subreys uh, Economic Development Board uh, for a few years. I've also worked in emergency services for years ambulance specifically and first response team. Did more, I've done work in that area in Werner and uh, field and um, and also committees for uh, community events. I'm, uh, I'm a builder. I'm, uh, I inspire people to, uh, to work for their community and to uh, better themselves. Uh, in the area of housing, I uh, work as a studio maintenance and I, uh, I stationed in Sturgeon here, so I take care of a senior building and another apartment building uh, for all level <coughs> of ages, and also family units. So I get to see <coughs> families that need help, that have, uh, uh, some of them have addiction problems, some of them have, have uh, come from the background that's troubled, and some of them are trying hard to get their life in order. And uh, so I, I see that and it bothers me and I, there needs to be more done. And uh, so I, I have uh, a very honest approach to, uh, to people. I listen. Jean-Tan Werner, Jean-Tan Le West, uh, Le West and Pissing, they did that. And uh, I want to work hard for the 14,364 residents. And I also want to work specifically on, on, on current files and take a, a better approach. So the second question, you're well aware that the current eight members of the council have been deadlocked, you can't someone describe it, on a number of important issues, whether they be procedural or substantive policy issues for much of the last term. What can you tell the members of council that will encourage them that your appointment would not automatically tip the balance to five four on each of these issues if they were revisited. My approach uh, would be to uh, firstly to study the files, to do my homework, and uh, get to know all the the, the negative and positive uh, on the issue. Also to listen and get advice if I have to from the residents or or uh, key people. Uh, try to encourage uh, a dialogue that's uh, honest and uh, building towards something, building towards uh, support and to uh, 
not to be hasty about, about decisions, but also be informed. Inform myself, inform the, the, the council members, and also the public. And they inform me and, and then to make a decision, an honest, conscious decision, not based on uh, other people's uh, negative. The third question is, tell us about two or possibly three issues facing West Epperson Council that it will have to deal with in a significant way before the end of this term. I am aware of the, the water problem. When uh, when I was visiting Werner, some of the uh, people were telling me about the water situation. I've seen it on Facebook. I've heard it. I have a son and family that's living in Werner. And uh, there needs to be uh, informed residents they, 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 some of them seem to be a, a, in despair. They're not getting the answers or they're, they're not, uh, they're discouraged. So they, 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 they hear that there are options on the table. So I think council needs to look at trying to do this uh, as quickly as they can and to appease the, and, and, and solve this particular problem. It's been around for a while and, uh, and the other thing is, is uh, being involved in housing, we need, we need affordable housing in West Nipissing. We need housing for seniors. The population is aged. We're all aged now. So that, that's very important. I also know that the addiction problem and the homelessness is, is prevalent everywhere. We're no different. <clears throat> But there needs to be something done for West Nipissing. I don't see it. If it is, there are dedicated people to the cause. I know that. But as I hear what's happening in North B and other cities, there's a big push for homeless dwellings, people going out there and working hard for that. And I, I think it has to be put on, 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 on sooner or later. Get the resources, get the people in place and find out what we can do. The seniors, the, the affordable housing right now, what, what, what all the real estate has been selling in, in the area. We're no different from North Bay or anywhere else. So they're selling the houses and then people have, can't afford to buy another house. Or the newcomers, the, 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 the first time home buyers, they can't afford it. They simply can't afford it. So, and I, I, I think we're at a crossword a, a, a crossroad in West Nipissing here, and we have to make that decision to say progress and take out antiquated bylaws and make new bylaws, encourage, we're open for business. This is a new day in history tonight where a councillor will be chosen and hopefully progress and work positive as a team. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's it. Three questions. Now, the fourth. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Fourth candidate, and this, this was not a gender bias pick. This is just the way that worked out. Fourth candidate is Norman Robert. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So. Tell us about yourself and your connection to the West Nipissing community. Okay, um, I guess start at the beginning. I started my career in banking, went on to work for municipalities in different positions for 41 years, and was on municipal council for West Nipissing for 12 years. That's I've uh, been part of numerous uh, Committee, social, uh, uh, like Knights of Columbus, uh, Lions Club. Uh, uh, I was a uh, uh, treasurer for the SLDO Figure Skating Club. I was a director of the Chemistry Minor Hockey. I, so I've always supported um, uh, the younger generation. Uh, play, like playground and sport activities. Uh, I was part of the committee with some 
a couple of members of this council uh, on the uh, beautification of Werner and to have a, the um, a Splash Park, they call that, which was uh, d done all by fundraising with no capital outlay from the municipality. We, uh, so there was a lot of, you know, a community involvement. So I've always uh, have the, uh, at heart, my main thing is support the community, try and help uh, neighbors if there are difficulties. And that's basically it, you know. I think I, I won't go the whole page I've given to the, <laughs> the board there, but. Uh, okay, thank you. The second question is, you're well aware that the current members of council have been deadlocked into two camps, as it were, on important procedural and substantive issues for the last term, or during the last term, or this term, excuse me. Uh, what can you tell the members of council that will encourage them that your appointment would not automatically tip the balance on each of these issues into a 5-4 camp? Okay, so presently I am on four different uh, council appointment committees and uh, on these committees except two members all the other council members do are, are members of the same committees in the past three and a half years we've always had successful meeting we we have different opinions but we managed to come out of the meeting with a good resolution and uh, it being a planning and committee of adjustment and those type of uh, legal procedure were affecting, directly affecting our decision, affect individual people's personal assets and all that, but we have to conform to municipal law, provincial laws, and, and, and uh, at the same time, I'll take the time to appreciate the support we get from staff because they prepare fantastic report to help us through the process. And uh, I've seen agenda that were close to 200 pages long, and we go right through in one meeting, and everybody comes out of the meeting, you know, satisfied. Uh, and one thing I sometimes will tell people is, when you have a situation, it's not always black and white. On a silver dollar, there's a, a, the edge, and Quite often, the answer lies on the edge and not on the face or the tail. And that's what sometimes we have to look for, that fine line between and find some compromise without, you know, and, uh, and trying to protect the, uh, the municipality and meet all its powers and restriction. But if we can assist the, uh, the individual person in front of us, that we can also achieve that and to meet. And I've, I've got to um, really say thank you to all the members of council here. They've been fantastic at those meetings. We've done some very good, you know, very successful meeting. And that's basically. So I have a reputation of doing my, what I call doing my homework before going to a meeting. Uh, looking at how the file inside up. So anything that will be brought up if, I, if I'm on the chosen is I'll take the time to get all the documents that apply to it, do some research, and Norm has a reputation of making his own mind with the facts in front of it. And I, that's what I, how I intend to keep on going. Okay. Thank you. And finally, Tell us what you think are two or three important questions that are, or issues facing West Epicene Council uh, that they have to deal with in one way or another before this term ends. Okay. Um, hmm. That is kind of hard to address now in the sense that the municipal budget has been established. So even if I had some bright ideas, <laughs> I don't think I could upset the the system and say now we you know what, what you spent three months deciding let's change that to this project but i think within those limitations 
we can address some issues. One issue that I've noticed that uh, the COVID problem seem to have uh, emphasized is the lack of uh, electronic communication, especially in the outline here. I'm not talking about the uh, core of Sturgeon Falls, and I think part of Werner is fairly well uh, serviced, but the outside areas, unless you can spend a fortune to have no access, and I've, I've seen some that cost you $800 to install the dish and this and that, and it's $150, $180 a month. Senior on, on pension, there's no way they can afford that. And so they were stuck for the past two and a half years, alone at home, and no, nobody to talk to. So I think that would be an issue that I know it's been brought up by different members of council for the past few years, but we would need, we would have to put pressure on the higher level of government to try and provide the service at a decent rate. In the outlining areas, there's also uh, the, the problem of uh, natural gas. We're, uh, we're, no, we either have to buy petroleum product. Now propane is uh, getting, but it, it's still expensive. And sorry, uh, we have a sponsor. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, I think uh, that's another avenue that I know uh, a couple of years ago we had a meeting in Toronto, but uh, we didn't get provincial support to, oh, we agree with you, you should do, we should do this, should do that, but so I think that these are issues that would be beside the area, uh, because council has already made commitment, so I think they have their hands full for the balance of the year with the existing budget. And uh, so I think of what I'm trying to say, there's other issue that they could start to roll or maybe make them an issue of the upcoming election to be prioritized at the next election. So that's, you asked for two, that would be too serious one, I think. And I know some other have been addressed like housing and all that. I fully support all of those, but uh, I'm trying to bring something a bit different there. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Melissa Sear. Hello. Um, we'll proceed. And I'm going to suggest that to be a better way to chance to listen to Melissa. That if somebody wants to use it for the next, uh, we could go right now and we'll be good for 15 minutes after or half an hour. It's up to the council, obviously. Okay. Well, there's a motion then on the floor by you, Councillor Lees. Would there be a seconder for a what's being proposed in 15 minute recess? My apology. Oh, it's okay. No, no but I think but I want everybody to. Oh, me too. So, a mover. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. So, are you lifting your hand as a seconder, yes. Jose Chris? Okay, and I'll get the clerk to read the motion and hold on. It's moved by Councillor Lee Senecal and seconded by Councillor Chris Fisher. The council adjourn fifteen minute recess to be followed by continuation of the meeting. All in favor? Um, just the uh, word of caution. A word of caution. If you leave the building, you may be stranded like Cosy Rowley was <laughs> Unless someone keeps that door stopper. <laughs>
protections that are here and out of currency, uh, Madame uh, Amendment to Miss Melissa. Oh, I'm sure. Sure. Be more uh, that polite. Uh, I think we can reconvene if it's in the recess is done. So, uh, they tell me some of the case that is the email pass it back to Mr. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Ms. Sear, tell us about yourself and your connections to the West Nipissing community. Um, I've been living in uh, Ferner, actually, uh, my whole life on Schmeichet. Um, my grandma's a farmer. Most of my family are farmers. And I see the community is not striving toward the farmers that are suffering because of high cost, everything. Families, elderly, kids. Um, yeah, and I just want to make a change. Benefit them. Okay. So, you want to tell us anything about other than living in the community? Have you anything else? This is, oh, you've got uh, a full 15 minutes here. Oh, so you great. Cut you off. Um, this first question is always the one that should be the easiest because you're an expert in it yourself. Everybody is. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, one thing about myself is uh, give me a task and I'll get it done. And I will overthink it and analyze it till. I figure it out. So that's the plan to move forward and make changes to help our community. And everybody in. So, as, you, as you've heard and I'm sure observed or, or seen, uh, you're well aware that current council members have often been deadlocked uh, in what some people would, would argue are two camps, four to four, on some important issues, whether they be process issues or substantive issues for this uh, current term. What can you tell the members of council that will encourage them that your <laughs> would not automatically tip the balance to by four in every one of these, you know, these issues? Well, I think that as a team, we shouldn't be leaving the room until everybody feels comfortable with the uh, and decision, to be honest. What do you think, and you made reference to it when you started your first response, can you tell us about two or three important issues that are facing the West Nipissing community that Council needs to begin to address, if not address, before the end of this term? Um, I think that the kids from the area are impacted by a lot of changes and nobody's addressing them. So, wish to add anything else to how council might um, that? Just finding more ways and better um, ways to adjust to the kids' environment around their lessons. Anything else to add? Not really. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for for uh, putting yourself forward. Thank you. Christine, you ready to work? Is that you? Check my pronunciation. You've got it. Please. <laughs> so, tell us about yourself and your connections to the West Nipissing community. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Chamberlain. Madam Mayor, Councillors, good evening. Uh, my name is Christine Riberty, and I have been a longtime resident, born and raised in Sturgeon Falls, West Nipissing. Um, I have two children, three grandchildren, and one coming on the way at the end of July. Um, I've always worked in the public eye from cashier to anything, pretty much. Uh, currently, I am working at a credit union Sturgeon, which is awesome. Always working in the public eye, always listening. Um, I did run in the municipality election in 2018. I have attended council meetings 2016-17 in person here. Uh, I have taken a boot camp to learn how to 
run for council with questions, answers, uh, exercises. Uh, I am still part of that organization. Um, and again, I threw my hat in for the race for this year for Ward 2. So I'm looking forward to that. A lot of work, but hey, it's well worth it. Um, that's about it. All right. Thank you. So as you've heard, and are well aware, I'm sure, there uh, have been a number of important substantive and procedural issues upon which council appears to have been deadlocked over this past term on two, two different camps of four each, it appears. What can you tell us, or can you tell the members of council, <coughs> that will encourage them that your appointment would not automatically tip the balance to 5 4 uh, on each of these issues on a go forward basis? So my commitment to council, to, to the West Nipperstein taxpayers, is to be open, listen to all the evidence, whether it's good or bad, pros, cons, do your delegation, do your conversations, talk with taxpayers if you have to, listen to your colleagues as counselors, go back and forth, do your discussion, do your due diligence, and make sure you have the whole picture in front of you and do the best decision for West Nipsey. Not for myself, but for West Nipsey. Thank you. So tell us about two or three important issues facing West Nipissing Council that you think must be addressed or start to be addressed before the end of this term? Well, I feel as council, we need to work together, put our differences aside, work together, listen to everything. Um, I agree with the other potential candidates saying Werner Water, for sure, guaranteed. The opiates, yes, guaranteed. Uh, housing, for sure. But we need to address what's going on with council now so council can move forward. So West Nipsing, we can continue to grow and continue to do what we need to do. Um, <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Your Worship, that ends the, the uh, questions for each of these candidates. Now it's a uh, council review process as to where and how it proceeds from here. Okay. Um, hey, thank you. Uh, to uh, leading this process and thank you to all candidates and congratulations to all candidates. It's hard work, heart warming uh, to hear the passion and the interest of individuals wanting to be <coughs> in the seat for Ward 7. Now, I identified as concerns earlier uh, pertaining to the issues of selection to the issue of closed session. Um, what I would like to do is go back to 3.1, which was the instructional memorandum that was provided to all members of council. And that memorandum was also posted on the municipal website along with the agenda. It would be the opportunity to ensure A, council defines um, and understands the process that will lead to hopefully a vote where a candidate name will be on a motion and majority uh, will support that motion. But from the point of establishing the process to the point of introducing the motion for a vote, um, there are concerns, questions, and I would hope that Mr. Bell Chamber will be in a position to explain if there are questions and the opportunity also for members of council uh, if they wish to have any amendments being proposed. So train of thought, if we were, if we were to take that memo and look at each point, 
that may assist us in addressing the items that Councillor Chris brought up as far as questions earlier pertaining to close and pertaining to uh, proceeding with an actual vote. Everyone agree to that? Yeah, I can do the next question. And it's short. So, um, obviously, you know, to, number one, we, we all need to be on the same page of the process, but, and I'm not sure if it's mentioned, but, but importantly, I think number two, uh, it would be nice to know what we're going to do in, in terms of, let's say we're deadlocked, um, you know, how are we going to break a deadlock? Because I would like to walk out of here tonight with the Ward 7 seat bill for sure. Um, but, you know, the, the deadlock is, is actual for it, obviously. Um, so that would, and then, and then once we've established those, then, then we could vote. Um, you know, reading the, the, just to reading you the ombudsman report that you sent. Um, you know, I, 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 I commend these people for coming forward, and I, and I really can't see. Oh, there's nothing I couldn't say publicly that I would need to say in closed session. So I don't really. I, I'd rather err on the on the side of caution and keep it open and. And that kind of thing. So that's just my view. <coughs> okay. So maybe what we can do is, um, you know, what um, the issue of the deadlock. Um, well, I'll go back uh, from the start and I'll pass it on to Mr. Bell Chamber. I agree. The process has to be clearly defined and we need to understand it and we all need, also need to be on the same page. Once we define the actual, would it be recommended that we got the motion to make sure that the process the steps involved uh, to proceed with the motion on our own will be defined as A, B, C, D? Your Worship, if I could respond to that. Um, this is probably the most difficult question as you raise it, counselors. How do you deal if there is a, a tie? In fact, prior to 2003, the Municipal Act gave councils direction in filling vacancies that actually allowed them to reduce it from, say, five to four, three to two, and then break a tie. It was spelled out in the Municipal Act very clearly as to how council would proceed. In 2003, with the passage of the Municipal Act 2001, because it was introduced first in 2001. The legislature took that away. And in fact, it put in place a couple of very important sections. And if you read the Ombudsman's report carefully, you'll note that the Ombudsman refers to those. And one being that there's only two instances in which a secret vote can be taken. One is to elect a presiding officer or a council, should it choose to have someone preside other than uh, the head of council. When I say secret vote, I mean by ballot. Or for a county, that's uh, Southern Ontario, to elect a county warden. And they can do that for a period of one year, two year, three year, four year. Okay. It was, it's very explicit. Okay. No, uh, no secret votes. So what the legislature has done is it has, has limited, quite frankly, the options, in my opinion. And it's not just my opinion. I've spoken with uh, others who have spoken to municipal solicitors, and that's the opinion that's been given by those solicitors. I am not aware of any written municipal solicitor's opinion, any legal opinion, that says this is the way you can break a tie without breaching the legislation. In fact, a careful reading of the Ombudsman's Clinton Wyoming report makes that really clear, in my opinion. The only reason a council might go into camera that is in closed session, exclude the public, uh, in considering appointment to a vacancy would be and can be to discuss personal matters about identifiable individuals. So if you have uh, possible candidate X, in closed session, a member of council should say, 
I really like counselor or candidate X because, or I don't like counselor X because, and this is what I've experienced. Okay, that's personal information about an identifiable individual. The Information and Privacy Commissioner has ruled that that's personal information and the Ombudsman's being guided by that process. The only vote that can be taken in a closed session of council is one that does one of two things. Uh, one is a procedural vote, which, and a procedural vote is to take a recess or to extend the curfew. You have a curfew on your meetings at the end of a certain time unless you vote to extend them. That's a procedural motion or a motion to adjourn and return to open session. That's also possible in closed session. Those are procedural motions. The other motion that's allowed, and it's very clear in the legislation, the Ombudsman makes it clear, is a motion to direct officers, staff, or agents, usually it's the clerk or the CAO, to bring forward a bylaw to do so and so. And that bylaw would be to purchase 123 Main Street or a bylaw, a, a motion to direct the clerk to provide counsel or put in front of counsel a bylaw appointing uh, person X to the position of so and so. The decision isn't actually made in closed session. The direction is made in closed session. The decision is then made when counsel considers that bylaw. And there's very clear guidance on that from a Supreme Court case, including the City of London, on how that works, and another one, a divisional court with the City of Kingston. It's a, it's a very, uh, for those of us that have lived this stuff for a long time, it's really clear, but it's very technical. I have to, I have to appreciate it. So the only reason you would go into closed session today is if the majority of members of council, okay, with the duly constituted motion under section 239, wish to move in camera to discuss personal matters about individuals and specifically, it's best to disclose as much as you possibly can, specifically those persons who have applied as candidates for the vacant position for more than seven. Okay? That would be the resolution, that would be the motion that you would vote on. And once you're in closed session, that's all you can talk about. You can't add anything else. So does that answer the questions? It's it. Okay, um, Councilor Agis, and then I'll pass it back to Councilor Chris. Okay, to, uh, that, that would uh, at least uh, uh, not solve, but uh, put aside uh, uh, something that uh, some want, maybe and some doesn't want. I, so I would like to have a motion on the floor to see who would like to go in close camera. I personally don't want to go, but a motion. Uh, sorry, that's, that's not, a, uh, my apologies. Uh, no. I spent a lot of time as a closed meeting investigator dealing with that and educating yeah. with that. That's not an appropriate motion. Okay, okay. so. I'm sorry about that. No, that's it's okay. Mind. That's why you're here to uh, direct us. Yeah. I well, have not a to problem. direct you, to help you. But... To help me, okay. So I said. So, so through you, Madam Chair, um, I guess what's a little bit confusing for me is uh, that these fine people did actually put in uh, uh, letters and uh, those are in a closed package, so those are not um, open to the public. And, you know, reading this, I understand I can, you know, professional qualifications and that kind of thing uh, are all fair game. And I'm sure, you know, by the anybody that's sitting in one of those chairs knows that they're somewhat in the hot seat because that's the nature of the business you're about to get into, right? So, um, but I am a little bit confused as to why those those applications are not in the public domain. So they all wrote letters, they're in our package, and it says, you know, I, I, I think I'm good for this job because X, Y, and Z, but those are, yet yeah, those are currently not publicly available. We all have them, but the public doesn't. So that's confusing to me. I can I can respond to that, Your Worship. Um, the clerk asked my opinion on that. What my advice was, and I said, uh, first and foremost, those are for members of council. Secondly, in some cases, it discloses personal matters about identifiable individuals in there. And even though there was an MFIPA disclosure on the face of the um, application, I I wasn't comfortable that it actually included those supplementary letters. 
if somebody wishes to make an application uh, or disclosure of one of those, then the clerk would have to look at it and see if there's anything that needed to be redacted. Uh, quite frankly, I've read them all, and I believe that pretty well everything that was on all of those and more was disclosed here tonight. I think members of council, would, would I would hope they would agree with that because it's basically the, the very first question was set up so that people could basically give that answer. Yes, it was a comfortable answer. Also, you Dan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we talked in depth about the deadlock, what happened, but we didn't talk about the process. Process of deadlock? No, the process, period. What what process are we going to use to determine what candidates that we're going to choose? Okay. Um, I, I know, I, I, I understand the deadlock part, mm -hmm. and you, you well, you're well well versed on that, but the process itself, and I think Councillor uh, Councillor Chris was alluding to that. What is the process? Okay. Interesting question. A deadlock. So, sorry, if I might. Oh, sorry. I don't want to talk about the deadlock. I want to talk about. I'm not going to. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. There, there is, there is a a uh, council. If it chooses to attempt to make the appointment tonight by way of a series, one or more resolutions, that person X be appointed, or sorry, be, uh, sorry, so the clerk, direction to the clerk, that person X, uh, a bylaw be prepared appointing person X to the position of Ward 7 Councilor, and, and that bylaw be presented to Council, which it could be tonight. Okay. So, Motion comes up with person X. That motion fails because it doesn't get a majority. So the only time you would not reach a decision if you actually made six of those motions and none of those six was, was supported. Okay. In my opinion, that would be the end of the evening's discussion unless council wished to take a five minute break, but I wouldn't suggest you do that and huddle in the hallway and try and have a, an improper meeting, okay? Uh, then, in my opinion, you'd be off to another meeting. And I would want to talk individually to each member of council if that was the case. Because I think the, the uh, minister's order puts the onus on each member of council as individuals, not just the corporation, but each member in, as council as individuals, to act in good faith to attempt to find a solution to this. And to start talking about how we would break ties or some other kind of formula at this point, or narrow the field, uh, I think would uh, would not, it, it might. So, put you an answer really quickly. I don't know if it would be legal, and that's where I have the greatest problem. And because so, and I, I don't, I'm not comfortable presenting something to you that might be challenged in court. And secondly, um, secondly, I'm not sure that that's the, the best way. Quite frankly, I, if you could get a decision that had eight to zero, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Supplemental for that? The question yes, is, uh, who starts and where do you start? Supplemental? OK. Yes. So let's, let's just make this very easy to understand. Let's make it basic. Are we going to have a vote, a hand vote on each individual? That's what I want to know. I.e., are we going, and I don't want to talk about resolutions. What I want to know is whether we're going to say, okay, Jamie Risto, how many are going to vote? Raise your hand, not have raise your hand. Then we move to each candidate. Is that a simple process? Is that a process that can be done? Or what you're saying is that we have a resolution on every individual, and it's voted on. I don't believe that the Municipal Act allows you to have an informal hand vote around the circle. How many are in favor of this? How many are in favor of this before we have resolution? If you read the Ombudsman's decision, he talks about uh, those informal votes in closed sessions being improper votes. And I think council can only act by motion 
leading to a resolution or by bylaw. There's no other way that council and the municipal act is allowed to make a decision. The law is very clear. I'm not sure who actually hand up first. Councilor Lee's, Councilor Chris. Okay, I, uh, on the same page, I, uh, I think I would like, to, I think what you're proposing, well, what's the law? It's, you're not proposing nothing and it's just to follow like uh, for a resolution. I personally, myself tonight, and I'm looking at my page, we have six potential candidates. I personally would like to have some time to, to look at the note because, I mean, uh, we and uh, if we do that, I just don't want to raise my hand. I want to say why, why I'm voting in particular for that person. I need to have reason. And uh, I take, I, I for one, I don't feel comfortable making the decision tonight because we got that information we read, but uh, just the, the question that was asked, uh, the, the nonverbal, I mean, I, and I have a lot of, uh, so for me, I would love to finish it tonight, but what we need to remember also, that when we have an election, people had a chance to talk to us, we had a chance to go door to door, and people had a chance to think about each candidate that they choose based on certain things. So uh, we cannot do that, obviously. I'm glad there's a lot of candidates because it proved a point, my point anyways, my thought or my opinion that the by-election is the best because it's really, I don't feel it's our job to choose just one person. Yeah. If I might, Your Worship, if you're going to debate that, there should be a resolution moved okay. so, and seconded so you can get that debate. So be if it's a resolution to, or a motion to defer the decision to a subsequent meeting. Can I ask for it or do well, you? Uh, okay, I would asked. like to, to see before we go too far because the, per, the first part of the process, it is that's it to choose to, to the way we're going to do it. I, I want time to look at it, to put picture. Yep. I know the face. You should have, you should, okay. your worship, you okay. should have the motion first okay. rather than the discussion. Okay, so Councilor Adelis is asking that we do not vote this evening and that, that the vote be scheduled at another special meeting because we're not going to be waiting to a regular council meeting. It will need to be another special meeting. And I believe on the documentation from the memo, there was a reference for June 16th. As long as it's before next council meeting. Is there a seconder to that motion? This does not, though, conclude discussions for this evening. Oh, did you? I didn't hear the question. No, I said. I don't want no one to think it concludes our discussion this evening. Where should I be the seconder for the motion? I know. No, I, I want to clarify. There's a, there's a... The motion is for the actual vote. Cosi, do you need your seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. The defer. Yeah, vote. Can we debate after this? Because... I do have some to. So, well, let the rest of the motion be read. A proposed date, are we going with the 16th? Well, Conseil Arvis did not make reference to a date. I'm just. Yeah, I said the 16th before the next date. meeting. It's next Thursday. Okay, to the next council meeting the week after, and we need to decide, have the decision made by then. That's for sure. It is moved by Councillor Lee Senecal and seconded by Councillor Denise Senecal that the decision to select a candidate to fill the vacancy for Ward 7 be deferred to June the 16th. Any questions or comments? So, yeah, so, so I mean, I, I just have one comment. We've been, we've been at this for a long time and, you know, uh, June, June 30th is bearing down on us as a, you know, a definite credible threat about my financial health. And um, no thanks, right? Like, let's get this over and done with. That's my, that's my genuine okay. feeling. You have to, you're entitled to your opinion and to your decision. And I'm calling it to a vote. May, may I have it re-read again, please? Sure. I didn't get the, the gist of it. It is moved by Councillor Lee Senecal and seconded by Councillor Denise Senecal that the decision to select the candidate to fill the vacancy for Ward 7 be deferred to June the 16th. 
I also have a question. Yes, Jose Broly. <clears throat> so what you were saying about the procedure for you in November, for the for the nomination. So you would go and you would we would okay. uh, nominate one. But right, right I, now, right I, now, Jose Broly, we're dealing with this motion. And that's where I was saying this does not conclude our discussions after for further questions. Yeah, but that will make that will help me make my, my decision if I want to proceed with this tonight or try to understand the system a little bit better. Okay. Now, okay. Process would be the same. Okay, so you would you we we would uh, you would nominate one person and we vote yes. We need to well, have if we have five raising our hand, that person is chosen. Yes, Okay. I, I think we need to discuss this process more in detail because I also have some questions and some options that I wanted to suggest and to have to look at that discussion. So it could be so it's clear. And I agree with the first comment of Kelsey and Chris. We need to ensure that we understand the entire process. And if there's an opportunity to propose amendments, this is where we do that this evening with Mr. Bell Chamber to guide us. But in the interim, now we have the motion on the floor to defer the actual vote to take place June 16th. And we have to deal with that motion first. And I understand. And by deferring, we would have a chance to understand the process. Yes. Perfect. No. Um, yeah, because we've got to be. Well. So who's in favor to defer <laughs> the final selection of the candidate to Thursday? of next week, June 16th. One, two, four, so it's defeated. So we're back to the issue of process. So I was, it's really an answer, I think it was my turn because- Yes, okay. of course, Chris. Okay, so um, I'm, a, I'm a little con uh, again, I'm confused because we do have straw votes all the time. So I, I would imagine that we do this through, like, and, and then, you know, we have committee of the whole and we straw vote all the time and we come to agreement. And then it's it's sort of, okay, this is, you know, on something staff can take uh, direction from the straw poll, but we have straw polls all the time and then it gets formulated to a resolution and that's when it's ratified. So. I don't I don't quite understand the, the idea that we it has to be by resolution because we can straw poll it and then it gets written into a resolution and then we and then we ratify that resolution. Is that my lost? No. Okay. So but your worship. Okay, just a second. I say no because we've done it. I've read some material, but I'm hearing some different information. So I will Pass it to Mr. Bell Chamber on courtesy to provide the information. You may use a process that includes straw polls. It's probably never been challenged in court. It's probably never been challenged with the Ombudsman. But if you read the Ombudsman's uh, decision, he does not speak favorably of that process. And nor is any municipal procedural expert that I'm aware of. Councils make their decisions by motion that get voted on and become resolutions, or by bylaws that are adopted by resolution. If you have committee of the whole, committee of the whole makes recommendations to council, and council then makes the, the final decision by way of, of, of motion, adopting those recommendations. But there's a very clear case in London, this is the case I referred to the Supreme Court, of SJ Holdings versus the City of London. The City of London dealt with an issue in closed session, debated for an hour, uh, said that there was no vote in closed session, 
they came out and adopted a very important bylaw along with 12 other bylaws in this period of eight minutes. And when I went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court upheld the judge's decision that said, no, you made that decision in closed session. There was no debate, no concession. It was the process was that you did it in closed session and you weren't allowed to do it there. So that's the that's the precedent that solicitors I've talked to have used. Yeah. And if it's I, a very important one. If I may elaborate on yeah. what Councillor Kirk is bringing up. Um, what we I think here from what I've read, okay, and I'm trying to get clarity on that issue as well. Open voting is through the format of a resolution. We need a motion. But I think what I hear from members of council is that uh, can we not adopt a bylaw that defines a process to achieve a name on a motion? And reading like the municipal act <coughs> on a high fault pertaining to a resolution. Silence on the title? Uh, it's, it's not, it's uh, silent on a process regarding a title. On the process, okay? A title is normally defeated, okay? I think, Your Worship, in every rule I'm aware of, the tie vote fails. That's right, it's, it's not defeated. defeated. It just fails to But succeed. I'm not talking about a, um, I'm talking about defining the process to reach uh, a vote, a motion where at least majority or hopefully everyone will support because the process was clearly defined. And when you look at the Roberts Rules of Order, it states that we can suspend the rules through the ability of adopting a bylaw, a motion. Um, council has that authority under Section 5 of the Municipal Act. So what prohibits council to say, we received six candidates, uh, we got their interest, we listened to what they had, um, to be able to provide direction to the clerk to get a candidate name on a motion, we will do the selection process in an open meeting. And if it does come to a tie, that tie will be, the, uh, the option will be used this way, and whatever the outcome, that will be the name of the candidate on the resolution. So we're making that publicly known what the process will be. Council has to agree to the process through the, by adopting a motion clearly defining the rules of engagement. Once we agree to it, well, there's no backing out. Worship, can I, may I comment yes, on Yes, if you can. Um, the Municipal Act is the foundational document that you must deal with. The Municipal Act gives Council the ability where the Municipal Act uh, gives Council the ability to set rules of procedure for proceedings for council and this committee's and local boards. However, those rules of procedures cannot contradict the Municipal Act. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the Municipal Act's quorum is a majority of the members present and voting, and it also says, except where the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act prevails and allows the quorum to go down below the majority all the way to two, regardless of size of council. So, Legislation is the is the key element. You cannot take your procedure by law and suspend the requirements of the Municipal Act. That's number one. And even if Robert's Rules of Order gives you a process, which it might quite easily, or Warren O or Duchesne or one of the others, gives you a process that will be useful, if it's contradictory to the Municipal Act, it doesn't apply. Robert's rules of orders, rules of order is cited in your bylaw, your procedure bylaw, to apply where your procedure bylaw is silent. And again, it can't it can't trump the municipal act. 
put it that way, or other provincial legislation. Um, if you, I've been thinking as you've been talking, um, if you want to come up with a process that suits you as council on attempting to break a tie, then I would strongly encourage that that process be vetted by your municipal solicitor because he or she is the one who's going to defend you in court should that matter come before court or in fact uh, go before perhaps go before the ombudsman that's that's the issue that's the issue i won't be defending you in court that's not my role okay i can't do it okay but on the other hand uh, i i can't give you a legal opinion on whether or not something is is uh, is valid i can just tell you what i know about the act and what i from experience, that's all. Okay, and the reason I brought it up is by doing a little bit of research on municipal websites, I noticed that the community is enriched. Uh, their municipal website, they're filling a vacancy for a counselor that resigned, and this is recent, like last month. Their website had the process from A to Z, and at the conclusion, it stated if both, if um, the recommended interest of the candidates becomes a talk, then they are they will be adopting a lottery system, but it didn't define what the lottery system would be. We can probably and use the term they would there would be a lot conducted, which means drawing that's right one of the candidates from half. That's right. That's what the municipal act said prior to nineteen or two thousand three. <laughs> they said that for decades. But now it's silent. In fact, it, yeah, it supersedes it's that process. It's removed. Right. Okay. So, okay, so, okay, Chris. so I have a, a out of left field suggestion I'm going to make it. So the Municipal Act does give Council uh, the ability to delegate a lot of authority. And I, I have two suggestions. It does. We yes. delegate things yes. all the time. So we have here six fine people that uh, put their name forward to make decisions on, on behalf of Furness. So let's say this council deadlocked, why wouldn't we let them vote? They, obviously they can't vote for themselves, right? And that's, uh, you know, then, then you made a decision. And then failing that, if we were still deadlocked, then I think we should send everybody's uh, resume and cover letters to the minister and say pick one. Because we are allowed to do that, really. Why not? Right, it's just a delegation of the authority. We are allowed. If I could just speak to that. Yes. So before you get down that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. um, I don't have the, the uh, municipal act on the computer here, but the section on delegation is very clear about mm -hmm. certain exceptions to delegation. And I would suggest the clerk look it up because perhaps the second last or last one in that subsection deals with this particular matter. Okay, it's created. Yes, not yet. There's a number of things that you can't delegate. Well, I, I appreciate how frustrating this is. Well, I, at least, well, I don't think it's frustrating. I think uh, on the other side, yeah, we need to know what we're going, and we have made a decision right now, a vote, a clear vote, that we've got to wait for the vote. I think at this point of time, I, I do agree that we need a process. Whatever it will be, we need a process. And when we come down to a tie, if we come down to a tie, because we don't know what it's good, we, we don't know. So, what what is the subject? What kind of process in your experience that you recommend to council to do such a thing that we're doing? Like we have sunrise, sunrise. <laughs> I live on sunrise for a while. Um, you have Sundridge that did something. Can we base our doing the same way? Can we follow that process? The question is, I would suggest that you, if you wish to follow the process that Sunridge apparently followed, or somebody's seen there, that it needs to be vetted by your municipal solicitor to get his or her opinion. Okay. Okay. No problem with that either. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, uh, the power to appoint or delegate uh, removed from office, an officer of the municipality cannot be delegated. Or to appoint a member to a vacancy on council, is that in there too? Um, I don't, cannot remove, cannot appoint. We don't want to remove someone. <laughs> well, it, it, 
you can't remove or appoint a member of the council. Yeah. Right. 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 Cool. So did you hear that, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had your hand up and Kosei Dan? Um then then we should go back with uh, uh Lisa's resolution, I think. Uh because uh we did it's we, past. we've we've had directions here that uh warrants to look at. Um uh, it's gonna clarify things. It's probably going to make it a system easier, uh, but we do have to allow that time to find out whether or not what we are doing is legal, uh, and, uh, and when we do know, then we know what direction we can take. So, so there is a motion on the floor by Conseil Ball to look at a process to break the tie, mm -hmm. similar to Sunridge, to speak to our solicitor. The proper directions. Oh, so cute. Okay, you shall say the compound now. I'll have to reintroduce the motion because her motion was good. If you okay, no, no, but I'll give you the floor because you know, I want to understand what you're proposing. Well, I'm proposing that we uh, meet again on December or June 16th after during this period of time that we uh, look at what you've spoken of with Sunridge. Uh, it's given us an idea uh, and to speak to our solicitor to see whether or not it can be done. And if, uh, if anything, uh, we can convey to him as well as what can be done, ask him. And if there's a solution, uh, he'll know the legality of it and uh, we may have an answer there. And uh, I think uh, I've been speaking here all night, trying to do it and as uh, Bellevue has mentioned that the solicitor is the one to speak to because he doesn't have a legal uh, opinion of it. Uh, I think my hand was up first. Well, there's a motion, motion right here. here. I need a seconder for the motion. I'll let the clerk read. What's... <clears throat> I'm just going to ask for clarification, Madam Chair. Are we looking at a motion to seek legal advice from the municipal solicitor regarding a selection, regarding a solution to select a candidate no. to fill Ward 7? Is that... I, I believe Kosei Ball made reference to the process of Sunridge. Yeah. And the process of Sunridge defined the lottery system for tie-breaking. And what Mr. Bellchamber said, if you wish to adopt a motion defining such process, his recommendation is that we seek the legal opinion because if ever the municipality is pursued on this legal issue, it will not be Mr. Bellchamber that will be representing council, it will be your legal advisor. Um, if I can add to the motion. And if during this process, uh, in his opinion, it's not going to work, then we would ask him what can work and do his, his decision and then go from there because at least we have a legal opinion. And that, I wanted that added to the motion. We're dealing with the motion. Okay. Well, I I don't uh, I don't agree with your motion, but uh, sticking to the fact because we're talking about the Sunridge run, Sun Sunridge. Thank you. You know what I mean. Uh, the rest, I think it's up to council if it doesn't work, and it will work because there. If you say no, we'll have to find. There's not a hundred thousand uh, solution. And I don't think it's us, council. I think we're, I don't know, but I have a feeling right now that. Okay, the, well, no, 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 I'm not talking that. Because so. the clerk was seeking clarification. Yeah, but so, we are in this agreement. To debate the motion, we still need okay. to get the motion on the floor. Okay, true. So, just again, for clarity, is the, is the motion to seek legal advice regarding a process to select a candidate to fill award? No. Which would which would um, 
I guess, uh, address the situation of uh, the legality. Can I, can I jump in? Yes, you may. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think a motion directing, and you can direct me or me and the clerk, for instance, to consult with the municipal solicitor about the appropriateness of the process adopted by Sunridge or filling in vacancy in the case of a, of a tie, uh, or, and to explore whether or not any other options are available to council. There we go. And uh, to seek his or her her, her advice. Uh, I think that would allow us to shortcut some of the advice I've given to you so that the solicitor would, would hear that advice. But then we could talk to him about Sunridge and he could look elsewhere. And he could make, he or she could make the determination as to what the, he or she is comfortable, I guess you should say they, are comfortable recommending to council, knowing that they're your solicitor. And I see that the clerk is writing all of this in. <laughs> so we're just going to give her It might not be. Exactly. No, no, but we'll give her time to, be, to record this. You think pretty accurate. Oh, it's so is, is that what's on the floor? I'm sorry. I'm well, I'm going to write it. I'm just, gonna read just, it. For, just allow the clerk, allow the time for the clerk to write down the motions so it could be it, and then we can discuss it. I'm surprised none of them have left. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's the second cozy for a week. I got a motion on the floor. So I'm just going to just I paraphrased it that uh, I just moved that I will read it before I say the motioners uh, to direct the facilitator and or the municipal clerk to consult with the municipality solicitor with regard to the process followed by the municipality of Sundridge and to and to explore any other process by which the process can be legally carried out the process to a point to Time. Or, or narrow the field of candidates. Discussion. Now that it's on the floor, Jose Burley, I believe you had a question. Yes, my question is, uh, Mr. Belkamp, do you, so you, have, do you have a system in place that you would know of, instead of going to Sunridge, that we could implement tonight to get this over with? <laughs> to narrow the field or to yes. break the, the tie? No, no, narrow the field and get this process started. No, right, no, that, no. Was, that, was, that was, I thought that was, I tried to make that clear in okay. my, my okay. advice to you earlier. Okay. Okay. So, uh, through you, uh, Madam Chair, so what you're saying then, that was not part of your, that wasn't within scope. The, the, the process of eliminating people to come to a conclusion on who we were going to appoint. That was not in scope. My scope is to facilitate council making a decision. Okay. So, what you're proposing, and, and I would like to delete the part of Sunridge because for me, that is irrelevant. I think that what we're looking at is we're asking you and the clerk and our solicitor to establish a process that we can use to get to the point where we can appoint an individual. It, it, say, it says the same thing, but. Uh, but I but, think you want to be, Your Worship, you want to be specific. That it is to narrow the field and or break a tie. Okay. Okay. It's got because that's what you're really asking. So that's what I'm at. So through you, uh, Chair, I'm gonna. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is to be very specific in what we're asking. But then we have a motion on the floor here. Procedurally, we talk about procedures around here. We have a motion on the floor here saying that we want to come to a conclusion tonight. No. Well, yes, it was defeated. You said. Oh, no, no. Well, okay. yes. Just a second. No, no you're, you're, you're no. Madam Chair. The motion to defer. Uh, the the motion to defer was defeated. Mm -hmm. there, that, there's no other motion as a result of that. So the only motion that's on the floor is at the moment is to seek solicitor's advice. Excuse yeah. me. But then, okay, Bye. supplemental to that would mean that if we follow that through, it means that there's no decision to be made tonight. Yeah, but excuse me, okay, may I provide an answer to that and help me out with your experience? The motion for deferral defeated. However, you're right. If we accept that motion this evening, some members of council may want 
to have this referred to another meeting so we can receive this information. So that's that's my idea. So I don't want to complicate issues, but a referral has to have a reasonable date, and a referral is also with a specific mandate and to come back at a later time with the prescribed information to help us facilitate that decision. The, your Worship, if I might, the logical consequence of taking the solicitor's advice uh, to me it automatically puts in place a deferral. Uh, if, if people are more comfortable or with the mover and seconder and, and, uh, or if someone wishes to make an amendment to that resolution that you have before you, that that advice be presented to Council uh, at a meeting no later than June 16th. I put on the decision with the that, that would be that way council knows what it's doing on June 16th this year. You're up against a deadline, personal deadline. Right. So, Brandon, okay. Chris. Um, so I just want to make sure that, that this precludes because uh, you know I, I'm of the opinion I'm about to force a moment to its crisis, right? So I'm, I'm going to put a resolution on the floor. I'm going to say I want to appoint this person and I'm going to read my. You know my my reasons for yeah, okay. my reasoning behind that, and then we'll take that vote and see what happens. You can, your worship, you can only right, have one resolution. I, I understand that. I understand that. But that's I'll my this, this, sorry. This is my question though. If that resolution passes, that because you said that you're sending that, that means we've deferred. So I can't do that to that tonight if that resolution passes. Okay. That's right. Interesting. Interesting. So. Now, we're well, debating that motion here. There's also a suggestion for to be very specific and identify a date on that motion by which, yeah. so it's specific and not left in the air. Would there be someone that would propose an amendment to this motion to specify the date? Yes, because I think uh, right now, how can we, we, we don't even know what we're doing and it is an hour past. So at least right, uh, if he goes and asks uh, uh, to come back with something and uh, on the 16th, for example, we're going to make the decision because we will have received all the information. And then at that point of time, we can receive the information and do the vote to appoint the person. Okay, so, so there's an amendment to the motion that the initial motion identifies June 16th, that the legal, the information that's going to be vetted, researched, spoken with the, league, uh, with the lawyer, be brought back June 16th, shared to council, so we can proceed moving forward. No, the motion doesn't end that last part, Your Worship. It just, it just has the information coming back to council on June 16th. I think the, there is an argument if that motion passes that Councillor Fisher's motion could still be in order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not denying that, but yeah. I'm okay. just dealing with this motion now. Yeah. But it, the initial. It's the logical consequence is, is a deferral, but not, not necessarily right. the that's only right. consequence. But uh, Kirk has um, identified the date for June 16th. Uh, that was an amendment. Um, who is seconding that amendment? What? On the floor. <laughs> Why are we held bent on the 16th? Why can't it be to, tomorrow night? Because it well. Well, do you have the opinion tonight on how to do a tiebreaking? No, I didn't say tonight. I said, why can't we go to the lawyer tomorrow? This is urgent. We get it done. Let's move on. That's our municipal solicitor is off until the 13th. Oh. <laughs> that I do know. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I answered my question. The date was identified by Jose Arviz, the 16th, but probably the 16th was noted from the memo that we were provided that if the decision was not done June 9th, highly recommended that a decision be done June 16th because right. we're working with a limited timeline. But the reason I brought that to the table. And that's okay. The reason I brought that to the table is because Councillor Fisher feels that this is something okay, that should be I done know. immediately. But now that the minister the solicitor that was is on clarifying the 13, everything's clear. Yeah. 
it was clarified, but the clerk is seeking a seconder for the amended motion to identify the date so it's firm. Conseil Yvon. So to reiterate, the amendment is to uh, amend the uh, earlier motion to seek, uh, to seek advice from the municipal solicitor with regard to the process to be followed uh, and to explore any other processes by which uh, the field can be uh, legally narrowed or a tie broken in the selection of a candidate to fill the Ward 7. And the amendment is uh, no later than June 16th. Can I read it? Questions for him to that motion? Yes. Okay, so I, I agree with that. Um, because if we don't, and there's a, another, whatever, how many motions you're going to put on the floor, that doesn't change the fact that we don't know how to proceed right now. We don't know what to do on the type, and we need legal advice to do that. So, one way or the other, we cannot appoint this. Let's, that's debate, my it. Let's debate this motion. Well, now. that's what I was saying. Okay. okay. Good motion. So, I do, uh, for you, from what I've just uh, heard a while back, even if we were to pass this, doesn't stop us to keep going with the motion that Councillor Chris Fisher wanted to bring forward. You can bring it forward, and then it will be called to a vote. And it's even though even though this will well, is it may it may influence, and I'm not talking on how members will vote, but it may influence the direction of the vote of members. Some may want to wait for the info. Some may not want to wait for the info. Then so would it would would it just would it not be wise to try? to set up a system like Mr. Uh, Councillor Fisher said, and if it doesn't work, then let's seek other uh, possibilities. Well, you're going to be asked to vote on that motion, and that'll be up to you to decide okay. the or me. Councillor um, Yvonne? It's a motion to defer. It's a motion to provide direction no. to Mr. What, what's a What kind of motion is this? A motion to seek information. A motion to seek information, information okay. and that the information comes forward to council no later than June 16th and the reason to be able to proceed with the actual vote appointment. The reason why I say that, Madam Metis, under our system, motion to defer is not debatable, and it's uh, and it's uh, it's to but I think what I think it says, and it's to be voted upon. If and then once defeated, it, it shall be enacted, but it's not debatable. But anyway, that's not a motion to defer here. It's a point. I'm sorry, I'm just that's why I said that. I'll say Dan. This, this is not uh, through you, uh, Madam Mayor. Melanie, this is not an amendment. This is a new motion on the floor. Well, there's a motion on the floor and an amendment to that motion on the floor. We didn't pass the motion yet, proceed. Yeah, no, but, the motion was uh, through you, Madam Chair. The motion was brought by Councillor Duhame and seconded by Councillor Seneca, uh, which was subsequently amended uh, by Councillor Seneca uh, and seconded by Councillor Duhame to include a, 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 a date oh. in the original motion. And customarily, you're going to vote for the amendment before proceeding to the original motion. So, um, pertaining to this. Now, we all understand the purpose of the motion to seek information by a certain timeline. It's not just to seek information, it's to seek a process. Yeah. Well, information well the, process. the information will define the process and look at the legality issues of a lottery mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't have that. No, we didn't well, say that. Well, we didn't say we that. Did. No, no. Okay. It it's makes not. reference to the system on the, on the options for tiebreaking. Let's put it that way. That's what it says. On options for tiebreaking. I think your worship, your best bet is to have the clerk read the motion. And if you're going to vote on the amendment first, then technically speaking, the amendment is that date, June 26th, be added. 16th. 
60. 60. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, that's the amendment, and that's what you vote on first. If that passes, then you vote on the main motion. That's right. Amendment. So do we concur? Well, can we, you? we need to vote on the amendment. The deadline <laughs> is 260. Yeah. Who is in favor? 260? Yeah. I do well, defeat it. Pertaining to the initial the motion to direct the facilitator and or the municipal clerk to seek advice from the municipal solicitor with regard to a process to be followed in order to narrow the field or break a tie in the selection of a candidate to fill the Ward 7 vacancy. We understand the motion. So, we need yes, I, okay. need um, I need to be able to have direction. Any objections to that motion? What, what, can you read again? Sorry, I was not going to vote. Okay, Chris, just a second, vote. please. The, okay. mo the motion uh, is uh, by Councillor Tuhain and seconded by Councillor Ney Senecal. The motion is to direct the facilitator and or the municipal clerk to seek advice from the municipality solicitor with regard to a process to be followed in order to narrow the field or break a tie for the selection of a candidate to fill the Ward 7 vacancy. So yes, I object. I, I would not vote. Okay, I'm going to call it to a vote. I said who objects? One objection? I object. Two, three, four, defeated again. So can I bring a question to Mr. Cumberland? You definitely may. Okay, okay. so Please. now that we don't have information that most of us is not ready to make a decision, we don't have a process and it's not your job to do it. So where are we going? Your Worship, if I might, there is still a process. Any member of council could move a motion that the clerk be directed to prepare my law that includes the name of person X for appointment to the vacancy uh, on the council. And that can be done. That's if it gets a seconder, it's debate can be debated. And then I would suggest you be very clear about your voting. Uh, make it clear for the record on the voting because quite frankly, as I said before, you're under some personal obligation to do this and you, you want it very visible. And the act does state that, that only show of hand or recorded vote, and right. not by a secret ballot. Right. Yeah. The recorded vote is very different from the show of hands. But, yeah. but I'm just making reference yes. to the act. There will not be uh, secret ballots. Okay. I, 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 will, I will make that motion. So, um, um, I'll just start by saying that every every one of those candidates would would fill that seat perfectly. It would be fine, but I do have a preference, um, and I make the motion um, to appoint Norm Roberge, uh to council for council ward seven. And is and there a seconder, Councillor Burley? So for clarification, um, this is a motion to direct the clerk to prepare a bylaw to or to. Prepare a resolution to adopt a bylaw uh, to appoint council uh, to appoint Norman Rebelge to fill the Ward Seven vacancy. Yes, is that correct? That's correct. A recorded vote, please. Yeah. And, and 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 obviously this is we can debate this first because I would like to give my. Well, so I will just I'll read it first. Of all, we need to read the motion and then we can discuss it and then you vote on it. It is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Larabee. Uh, be it resolved that the clerk be read directed to prepare a resolution to adopt a bylaw to appoint Norman Roberge to fill the Ward 7 vacancy. Discussion. Conseil Broly. Well, Conseil Chris, Conseil Broly. So I, can I go first? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, I, I do have some notes, and so I'm just going to give you the rationale for this. Um, as I said before, any one, any one of those candidates. Um, I could fill that seat just fine, and, and, and I'm perfectly happy. Um, one of the things, and I actually said to Nigel originally, one of the things that I didn't want to do uh, that I find a bit tricky here is if you're actually, you might have sat there and said, well, you know, I'm going to run for council, I'll run for council next term. 
I think that's a sticky thing because we're putting our fingers on the scale of the election if we do that, and so I, I don't like that idea. Um, the reason, um, the reason, I, I, I have no secret. Uh, I've been thought that Norm was the candidate all along. I, under normal circumstances, I might have actually shifted if there wasn't a, if there was not a pandemic, um, and, and and you know so little information. I might have jumped the fence and said, you know what, I set a by election, but. I just was not there and I, and I, and I never got there. Um, so, Verna, interestingly enough, had the highest voter turnout per capita um, in the 2018 election, and uh, Western Pacific was actually way above um, the provincial average. So, Verna uh, had to turn out to uh, 63.7%, and that was the highest vote in the, uh, in the, in the municipality. So, that's um, commendable, and obviously, that's an engaged community, and it says a lot about them. And so, uh, you know, I think uh, the most democratic thing is to is is to he would be a by election or or the runner up for that thing, and and, and you know I'm, I'm talking in terms of, uh, of uh, democracy. Uh, and as I said, my uh, position hasn't changed, and I think this letter as well that from um, the existing councillor, uh, not the existing councillor, but the councillor that quit, who Verna did vote to make decisions for him for them and the fact that Jeremy has endorsed Norm and the fact that there are eight other names going all the way back to pre-amalgamation um, of councillors. I mean, I, some of these people, I don't know how far that goes back, but it goes back a long way. And, and, and you know, Norm is endorsed, uh, you know, and those are, are sort of the people who have been decision makers for Werner. Um, you know, I do understand that, that there is the argument that, you know, you're you're acting for all of West Nipsing, not not for not just for Verna, but I actually kind of disagree with that. That's why we've got the ward system. So, uh, and ward is a great example. Um, if you got a Verna candidate arguing about a uh, a water issue or a water budget or whatever, yes, you have to take everybody else into consideration, but they're going to argue that very differently than a guy like me who has no one on sewer and water and, um, and and it's just a completely different position. So so you do you are beholden to your your um, uh, constituents first in your ward and but in the context of that you know we uh, there is everybody in, in the municipality. And um, that's my reasoning. You know, that's that. I'll say Thank you very much. I also think that uh, in line, I think the answer Chris took took a lot <laughs> out of what I was going to say, but it's it's true. Uh, as uh, Norm is the uh, only to me the only logic uh, uh, vote here because he was the runner up, uh, and the only uh, he the only one that showed interest in the last election. Um, he always uh, he's got a lot of integrity. His vote is always bang on, uh, either if it, I was in line with it or not, he always made up his own mind. So this is the type of leadership that we need around this table. Uh, and he's a book of knowledge. He sits on four uh, committees presently. So he knows he's, he's not like he's, uh, uh, I would just um, I would just like to know uh, as much as what he provides. So, and also the, um, I call him the old guard of, of Werner, the township of Caldwell, all through their support uh, uh, behind Norm. They know what he can do. And uh, so this this is why I don't have any any uh, bad feeling uh, uh, towards any other one. But I think that Norm would be the person to be sitting around the table to represent Werner. And I know Werner will be represented well by, by Mr. Turnabout. Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what the Chief Minister, Minister uh, spoke about Mr. Rivera, but I've known Mr. Rivera for a long, long time. But I've been in council for a long time. And, you know, uh, with the endorsement with these people in Werner, in Calva Township, and they're in favor of, of appointing Norfolk to finish the term. And I, I don't think that Mr. Rivera wants to uh, continue, but he wants to help us out. And finish the term in, in the good terms. So, thank you. Call you, Dan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
Um, I won't restate what everybody else said, and I commend the people that did present themselves. It takes a lot of guts to sit there and talk about what who you are and what the issues are. And the only thing that I would like to add to that is that uh, it is true that uh, uh, Councillor, not Councillor Lavage, uh, Norman Lavage does sit on four committees, and of that, I sit on one. And I can say that, uh, in all due respect, he's done a heck of a job unifying that uh, planning board. And uh, it's only because of uh, the great knowledge he has. Uh, one of the things that's been repeated a couple of times around this tonight that I take a little offense to, and, and I don't take this personal, Nigel, uh, you basically say that it was the whole term that we were in this deadlock. It's not been the whole term. It's been since Jeremy Sagan resigned, and that's caused the four against four. Before that, we had on the debate, we did work together, and we, we, were moving, we were making strides. So I just want to rectify and make sure that the public is aware of that, because that is uh, it's a bone of contention for me. Uh, in as much as the uh, norm, uh, his participation in the community, any time that uh, I put on a, 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 an activity, uh, all I had to do was ask Norm to help, and he was there ready to do it. So I think with his social uh, conscience and the fact that he's contributed on to all those great committees uh, and the volunteer work he's done in the community through the years, I think it's a no-nonsense, and I think that we should move forward. I think the population is asking us to move forward, and tonight we can make that decision. And uh, what I would like is my colleagues agree that Norm uh, be appointed and that we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to comment on the uh, previous comments, uh, just just is showing how close-minded the, these uh, councillors are. It's unfair to uh, promote a uh, a candidate when you have five other good candidates sitting in the hall. They're not being given a chance because four councillors had decided six months ago that this was their candidate. And it's unfair to them. It's unfair to the system. It just shows bias in the system. And I can't, uh, Mr. Rabelge did not even put a, a, a sign for the, the last elections. He had his chance to promote himself during the elections even if there was a, whatever, the, the 67%, he never won, he never showed interest. The, the only thing he wants to do is finish the term by helping the, the municipality to finish the term, that's fine. But I think we should have a candidate that maybe is looking a little further ahead and trying to get experience for the elections for next year. So to just, I just can't support this, uh, this motion or this candidate at this time, thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm also very disappointed that it went by because obviously this is the choice of six months ago and it did not change. We did not have a choice then. We want the people of Vernon to uh, to choose their own candidate. Speak up. Well, then usually if I speak up too much, they say you're, you're yelling. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Just okay. a second, please. Um, okay, so, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna speak up, but I, I don't have an issue with talking a lot, Billy. <laughs> okay, so you're hearing me at the back? What I'm saying is I, I feel sad that the dilemma, first of all, I agree with Councillor Dan, it's not since the beginning, but it was just a year after the beginning, so three years out of four, that we're not agreeing, I think it's a long time. Uh, I disagree with the fact that uh, the excuse of, uh, at that point of time, of uh, no by-election because of COVID, because there were violations all over the province and it uh, uh, federal at that time that happened uh, when they were COVID. I don't have anything against Monsieur Raberge. I work with Monsieur Raberge. I, I mean, at this point of time, yes, he was appointed, but again, it was secret ballot. And I mean, he was appointed by council, which is our job to appoint. I still strongly feel tonight that what we're doing tonight is not the right thing. The right thing would have been a by-election. We cannot do that. I swallow that and I live, you know, that's, we need that. We need to have it. I don't want to be responsible to bring to court. But again, by putting 
In a week time, we have six candidates in this room that show interest for a ward in our municipality, and it's rejected just like that. Who are, who are we? We're eight people that always agree based on the fact that because of whatever reason. How many times that I did not win my vote, did I? Okay, let's focus Okay, on yes. Okay, and you're right about that. When I start talking sometimes, but thank you very much, Madam Mayor, okay? So I am very disappointed. Mr. Roberge, nothing personal about you. I think you did your time. I think, and, and I have Councillor Jeremy and the previous council of 20 years ago before amalgamation. I'm gonna repeat something that somebody well placed it said in 20 years time, there's a lot of things that change in the municipality. Okay, it's not the same thing. And those people, they support him. They could have voted at by-election also if we have him. So tonight, I'm sticking to my decision to represent the people of Werner. And I don't think it's right the way that uh, it was trying to be put. Monsieur Roberge, nothing against you, but you were not my choice. And that's what I wanted to wait because there's five other people that I want to process in my mind because six months ago, I did not support anybody in that room or name anybody because I did not, I didn't want that process. So I'm not saying so. We've got five people left that I did not know that were putting their name before a week ago. And five people that some I know a little bit more work with it a little bit. But I mean, at that point of time, it's, I, I can't, I cannot support that. Thank you. So no, can, can I just talk? No, do you have it? No, we're there, so, we're there, so, we're discussing the motion that so, you So, so I just, just, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's a bit of a misnomer to say, you know, it's the same thing or whatever. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm looking at this uh, strictly from a democratic point of view. What's the most democratic? And we can forget about the election. We can't have an election. It's done. There's no by-election. So, so with that out the window, what is the most democratic you, you can do? Is the point of the run around. <laughs> that's, your, that's your opinion. And uh, Madam Mayor, I said, just, yes, a, uh, just a question as far as procedure. Uh, the discussion, I can't, I, I, he said he say, I'm saying he say, uh, he also, there's only two people right now, I'm uh, Conseiller Yvon and con, 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 So if we start a debate about what I said, or what he said, I'm say I was like you for, spoke first. I was able to coach you on some of the things, some of the things they say. Okay, and but so, we focus on yeah. Uh, we need to focus on motion. The motion is for the appointment of uh, Conseil Norman Belge, uh, Conseil Rowley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In defending my my choice, a uh, comment was made that 20 years ago, uh, Monsieur Robert was sitting at around these desks three years ago, and he's sitting on four boards actually. So it's not like things have changed that he wouldn't know what to do. He is he is a, a vibrant person in this community. He works he work still works for the community. So this is my position on it. He would be he's a runner up and he would be the best at this time. For your opinion. Yes. yes. Well, as chair, I'd love uh, to have the opportunity to also have my say because I do know that uh, there was a request for. But it's too late now because it did not that we can have it after we not we didn't vote. No, yet. we did not vote on the motion, Cosali. Uh, there was a request that the motion would proceed with a recorded vote. It was a request. But I said before we proceed with any type of vote, it's the time to debate the motion. Yeah. So everyone do have their say pertaining to the motion before it's being voted on. Okay. Okay. So I'd love to have my say, but I just want to make sure that every, everyone no, around the table. Madam Minister. Ms. Consiglio. Well, I was taking notes here after I listened to the many of them. They all did a good job. And I certainly am pleased to see how many have really put their names there forward. Uh, in terms of Norm, uh, Norm is, is a friend. I've known him for many years. And yes, he's uh, he's on committees. 
Um, no, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, in other, in, in looking at the issue itself, there, you know, there's other person, people that have put their name to their, and when, you know, that uh, resides and, and uh, who is on other committees as well and who have been on committees. And uh, I think when you're looking for what's going to happen during the election, if that other person, whoever it may be, puts her name and follows through to the election, it would certainly give that person a better, a better, or more of a chance to to continue on as a elected uh, councillor in the in the election upcoming election. So that, and that's how I'm looking at. It. Uh, if Norm is not not decisive on what he's going to do in the following years. That's something we should, we should question. I question whether we should put someone there that is interested in continuing as a counselor. So what? I'll see, Chris. So, 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 as I, I want to repeat, actually, so I think I think the reverse of that. I think that people who um, have made them, you know, uh, I, I have spoken to Norman. I don't think he wants to run for a council. Council again, and I think that's positive because I think it's very important for this council to actually pick somebody um, that is going to run for the council because you give them an unfair advantage, and those names aren't in yet, right? So I think we should give, you know, that's that's an, another reason why I think you it's know, a good choice. Chris, you stated that in your opening I know, remarks. but 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 I think but I, I think mean, I mean everyone is entitled to learn. But you stated your position. Yeah. And it's not to debate the position of another member by saying that they are incorrect. We need to respect the opinion. You stated that. If you have something additional, yes. So, so, it. so, do. So, Councillor Ivan, do you believe the opposite is true? Yeah. Thank you. I did hear. Well, I'm talking about, like I, I said, uh, you make you make a good point, but also look at the fact <coughs> that our, our people were perceived if. Uh, Norm is coming in because they would perceive, well, of course, they got to stand with, with them because since they won, that's what they wanted him. Now he's there. So I'm not saying that it's true or not true. You're talking about different things. They, there could be when you're talking, well, I was talking about the council. I was not talking about Norm because I know Norm sat with uh, this council three years ago. I was talking about the previous council. Jeremy and Otik should have a say because he resigned. He resigned and he had the right, he would have voted if it would have been a by-election. So for me, there was a letter of recommendation coming out. There are only eight people out there. How many people in Werner? 946. Less. 946. That's so we're there. eight around the table, eight, eight persons. So I don't think they should be the, in charge to elect anybody. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, Dan. Um, I'm gonna this one of the... You triggered a point that uh, I want to make is that uh, during the interview, it was quite clear that Mr. Robert said that he is a standalone person, that he'll base his decision on his research. And I have wrote every comment that every person said during their interview. And it can't be more clear than that, that he said that he's not for one group or the other group. And the thing, and the thing is, is that what we do is we have to move forward. We've got agendas that are that thick. We cannot do the we cannot do the, the election process. The logical thing to do, like every community really in northern Ontario, let me say point point of order, Madam Can let I make a finish. point of order right now? Because I, I'm really feeling that uh, logical that means that you think you're smarter than me. I don't think you're smarter than anybody in this room, okay. Councillor Dan, okay. and that's not right to be treated like that. Logical means because they're saying something, they're smarter. I don't think so. I resent that, and this is not right. We're kept, and this is why it doesn't matter who's going to be okay. sitting at Conseil I heard the point of Oh order. my God. Yeah, you can have that smile, Conseil Dan. Okay, Conseil Lee, smart. Let's okay. calm down. Conseil okay. <laughs> Dan, please wait. So I don't, you know what? I think we need it's a based break. on a remark, and the remark may have been interpreted two different ways. Uh, so, so I will just 
Let's focus on the matter beforehand, which is the resolution of appointing Norma Rebelge and keep exclusions of personal issues against right. Conseil Dan? When I said logical, I was not referring to you. Oh, no, I said you were I just ruled on the point yeah. of order. Focus on the motion. I don't have to focus about... on anything, Madam Mayor. I'm finished. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we should, uh, and I think, I think uh, Councillor Denny has a question, but I, I just why, why I am speaking, I think we should uh, do this vote, and I also think that uh, uh, Chris, 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 mm -hmm. uh, let me continue chairing. And before voting, I also am entitled as chair to also provide comments. Councillor Denny. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. It seems that uh, we get a chance to uh, uh, speak uh, at least twice on the same subject and repeat ourselves. So I, I guess I can do the same thing. I think you're you're, you're still uh, a biased group. You had no intention of going through this process unbiased. Point of order. You're, you're, point of order. Madam Mayor. The same things, that you're, the same things I, that you're saying the same you said let, six months ago. Let me have my point of order. Your point of order is My what? point of order is Mr. Uh, Councillor Senecal is making allegations against us saying that we're biased. Okay. Which violation? Well, he's decision? violating the code of conduct. I'll take it right here. The code of conduct said you're supposed to respect each individual as an individual. Make a complaint. He is making. Oh, make a complaint. What's that mean? Please. So, so, rule on my point of order. So, your point of order is saying that it's it's respectful. his opinion. No, not his opinion. It was a statement he made. And it was disrespectful. Excuse me, Madam Mayor, I'm breaking up, but uh, if I'm being told that I'm disres disrespectful, I, I want to hear it from him. And I, I was uh, just uh, uh, pr uh, saying a, a personal uh, opinion of mine, and uh, I, it would be easily proven. It would be easily proven if we just go back to the tapes to last uh, six months ago and we could have the same conversations that, that we've had six months ago when you refused to have an election. So, uh, uh, whatever, uh, I'm just saying. Uh, okay, just a second, please. Uh, uh, if I might uh, just completely appropriate for me to jump in, but I'm going to anyway if you give me permission. Uh, point of order can never be used to interrupt somebody else for that purpose. The purpose of the point of order is to speak about violations of the procedure bylaw. Okay? Not to interrupt somebody else. Thank you, Daijo. However, well, you've just interrupted someone causing <laughs> However, Your Worship, your role is to maintain decorum in council chambers, and that decorum includes appropriate behavior. Appropriate behavior does not include personal attacks on one member against another member, all right? And I think that that's something that's really important because I think this is where it's going. It's going away from the resolution at hand, and I don't think it's going to serve your interest as well to do that. Okay. So, Coming back to the issue of uh, Jose Dini, were you concluded with your comments? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. Okay. And, um, okay. Okay. so we're going to have to vote on the issue, but I would um, appreciate having the opportunity to have my say. Um, I've heard everything that's been said, but you know what? Say that all the candidates that are sitting in front of me uh, would definitely be real candidates in the election. Um, and I would feel comfortable to work with everyone. However, we have to make too much of one candidate, and we have to do consent amongst all of council with the candidate to adopt to a motion. Um, it's <coughs> difficult to proceed in this fashion compared to what has always been done in the past. 
and it's heartbreaking. Um, there's a potential motion on the floor that could be defeated, and if defeated, it's heartbreaking for the candidate to also hear this or others to hear this when I would have preferred to have a process defined and that the process would have been mutually agreed by all members of council. And that would have been the rules of engagement. And at the end, whatever name appeared on the resolution, which was the objective defined by the minister to have that filled by June 30th, that, you know what, it would have been embarrassing if you approve a process and you vote against the process. That's my personal opinion. I will not be able to support the motion that's being brought forward. And I'll be honest and sincere. Um, I've been approached, and being a person of my word, uh, A, at the beginning, two years ago, I stayed by election because there was interest within the community. It had been the first election that took place in the community, the Ward 7, in 12 years. And B, there were interests from individuals of the community as well. So that's why I've always pressed the issue for a by-election. Let the electors decide that's the privilege that they have, but that privilege was not granted to them. Today, we're in a pickle because the decision needs to be done by June 30th. And that the fact that I was approached by a candidate and knowing that the candidate had submitted the information exactly as per, you know, what the candidate had as far as interest, um, unfortunately, I will have to provide my endorsement to the other candidate than what is being proposed on the uh, resolution this evening. So I heard that we want a recorded vote on this motion. So I will direct the clerk to read, to um, proceed with recorded vote, bill with the motion. Councilor Juhain? No. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Latterby? Yes. Councilor Mallette? Yes. Councilor Ravita? Yes. Councilor Denise Seneca? No. No. Councilor Lee Seneca? No. Uh, Madam Mayor Joanne Savage? No. Motion to adjourn. I check the second that uh, cause a crisp that motion, the but the for the motion needs to be read. It's there's a motion to adjourn. Do we know what time it is? Eight thirty seven. We'll need to support the motion. Second. Uh, second the motion, sorry. I'll say early, raise his hand. Yep. This is, I know this is completely out of order, but since I've been appointed as a facilitator, you've put yourself in a position of no decision and no timeline, and only one of the six was considered. If that goes for the minister. Then the minister looks at the order. Does the minister look and say, Did this council proceed in the favor? The mover, a seconder, you'll see votes in favor, you'll see negative votes on a recorded vote. And then if he sees no action after that, you have to think, Well, what's his conclusion going to be? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that's all. Okay. So my, it doesn't stop my role as a facilitator, but and I'm happy that you bring that up because the issue of motion. But you still have the you still have a motion to adjourn. I still have a motion to adjourn, and there's a seconder that should be voted on. Yep. And my recommendation to council would be to defeat that motion, so we can yep. define a game plan for the next step. So, calling this motion to, to a vote. Any uh, those in favor? I do. Well, Kat, we have a, yeah. Can we have a recorded yeah, vote for this, Madam Chair? Chair. Okay. Uh, I will ask the clerk to. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm recorded vote on the motion. Adjourn. Uh, Councillor Mallette. Yes. Councillor Lee Seneca. No. Councillor Fisher. Yeah. Councillor Latterby. Yes. Councillor uh, Mallette. Yes. 
Councilor Ravita. Yes. Councilor Denise and the cow. No. Councilor Lee and the cow. No. Mayor Joanne Savage. No. Motion for recess. What? Motion for recess. What? Now, okay, it's okay. a motion for recess. Who seconds the motion for recess? Councilor Lee. My opinion to council, forget the recess, deal with the business. No, no. no. That's my There's a motion on the floor. Okay. If you're if you see Dan help man on procedures, keep with the procedures now. Okay, I am there. No, you're not. So at least we need to vote on the motion for yes. the recess. Yes. yes. I as mayor. You cannot make your comment before you. Madame Mayor. Okay, fine. Well that you vote then we so, okay, tell me explain me the recess was the break, please. Right. Well, they asked for adjourned a meeting and they want a break. These, Consalis, we voted on the adjournment. It was the key then. Okay. There's a motion on the floor moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Rita. There's a motion on the floor for a recess, a 15 minute recess. Those 10. Can we have a debate now? I thought after a motion, you have to have a debate. See, Dan, no, 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 the motion is on the floor. Yes. <laughs> The clerk is seeking clarification. 10 minutes or 15 minutes? Now I heard 10 minutes. Yeah, but we're supposed to have a discussion on that. I know, but the clerk needs the clarification for the motion. Huh? A procedural motion is not debatable. Okay. Not but if we're going. Okay. Okay, thank you. Because initially it was 15, that would have been the procedure. Our procedure is 10. Yeah. That's what I wanted to figure out. 10? Sure, I just got to make okay. it difficult. Okay, second. Yes. Say Dan. I think motion for moved by Councilor Fisher and seconded by Councilor Rabita. Uh, motion for a 10 minute recess. Those in favor can take a 10 minute recess at this moment. Defeated. <laughs> okay. Now the question will be asked to Council. We need an action plan. Now we have the first motion that was defeated. Is there another motion to be introduced on the floor? Well, I do have a motion that we proceed to involve our facilitator with their clerk to talk to to try to come back by the 15 or 16 that we have put. Or can I do that the same? Okay, so I'm going to change it differently. Putting a motion on the floor that our facilitator, the clerk, communicate with our lawyer to uh, to look at option and this to be done by June the 15th. It's, it's a really uh, um, it's resembled the, the first one, but it's a little bit different. So can we take that motion, and Monsieur Facilitator? Is it appropriate? Okay. If we look at our procedures, if you want to reconsider the decision that's been taken this evening, well, like, that's why I change it. Well, it's not really changed because it's seeking the same thing. Correct. Right here correctly. I need to ask clarification to the clerk. She heard differently. It's similar. Similar. <laughs> so nothing no, prohibits no. us to be able to reconsider a decision that's been taken earlier by major by high two thirds majority. Madam Mayor, one question. What uh, Councilor Lee is, is suggesting is uh, so by going to get uh, 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 what should I call it? Uh, advice on, on a corporate lawyer and through uh, 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 the chamber and, and the clerk. That, that is that, uh, does that mean we get our journey? You have to get information? Yeah. Okay. We still need a motion. Well, we still need a motion. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Okay, we still need a motion to adjourn. But, uh, According to our procedures, reconsider a motion that was defeated. Uh, we still need someone from the prevailing side to approve it, and we need two thirds majority to be able to proceed with that discussion. Would there be a member who voted against seeking having this information sought and brought back by the June 16th? So who voted against it, willing to reconsider their position. And I'm, I'm, I'm just wanted to comment. I have a problem with the sixth time. I have a, I have a problem with that. You have another so, date that Cody Chris that you would propose? 
Can we get it? Can we get it done by Tuesday? <laughs> we heard from the first 13th. that the legal advisor is away till the 13th. Um, you know what? There's also the 15th. Sure. But we also need to seek the availability of our facilitator, Mr. Bell Chamber. And we're putting you on the spot. No, I can attend by electronic means on the 15th. I can't attend it, can't not attend in person. But that should be okay. The other, okay. Jay Dan. I want to do Okay, well, I want to do a motion. So the proposed, the question is being asked. Change, the only change to the initial motion that was defeated is the date, and that the date would be identified as the 15th. Yes, yes. I second the motion. Second it? Okay. We still need, okay. It's time for this question. I, I find this kind of ironic when we're, we've already demonstrated that there's four people that are going to support one individual. And now we're going to put that individual through this again. And the process, what is the process going to change? I'm just trying to figure out, like I'm trying to get my mind around, what, are we, what will the process change for those individuals? There's five there's four, there's four people that have already, not, cannot speak. Yes, sorry about Consent. that. I apologize. Please. I apologize. I apologize. Me. Okay, Consent, please wait until you are delivered. I know, but I want to okay. apologize for yeah. Sorry, Councillor. Cause he So I find it disrespectful to the people sitting here that we're going to go back and ask a process when we know that there's, far, there's a far uh, conclusion already that even if a process came about, that it's going to be a deadlock. So uh, I, I uh, uh, yes. Oh, so these, you're going to change your mind? No, 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 I'm saying there's... Hey, Cosadis and Cosadis, let's uh, focus on the motion that's on the table and forget the well, just, personalized I issue. I didn't know, that was not... Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, well, I want I want to know uh, where you get that we uh, supported somebody. I didn't give any name. There's 5% that we got to go one by one to vote. So who, who do you think I'm going to vote for? I don't even know myself right now. Well, so, okay, but that's what you're going to vote against Norma. Hey, yeah. Jose Dan, no. Jose Dan, you were not provided the vote. You're the one that brought it up. Jose, please, okay. please, next time. Ask me to leave. The next time I will ask you to vote to be recused from okay. this meeting. I, no, I wait. Jose, Chris. Oh, no. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm just, my, my daughter's in town. Um, so, I just, I just want people to understand that uh, if at the beginning of this meeting people would have said, you know what? That's a good idea, Chris. Put it in those guys' hand. They can't vote for themselves. I just said, okay. So for, for everyone to say, it's this, it's that. It's not this or that. I have my logical choice that is in my head. That's the right thing to do. And But I'm not stuck on it. I would have perfectly said, these guys have put their names forward. Let them let them vote. They can't vote for themselves. And whatever they come up with, I'll support yeah, that. I, I would have done that. Jose, Chris. I just want people to know that. Well, it doesn't matter. You stated that. Stated. Do not delegate that authority. So why even state you want people to know? It? Let's because focus on the matter. Focus on the matter. The motion. So the motion is to be able to seek information, time breaking. What are the options? That it's brought to council, and it's been identified. The amendment June fifteenth. There's two members from the prevailing side that initially voted against it. Now they're voting in favor. We need two thirds majority to be able to proceed with that. That's what our procedures say. Madam Mayor, Consagi, please. Uh, when you want to reconsider a matter that's been voted on, you need members from the prevailing side that voted against it. Consagi, Chris said yes. Consagi, Leo said yes. I have a question. Okay, if it's pertaining to the motion. Yes. Yeah, so we, thank when you, Consagi. They say yes doesn't mean that they're going to vote for it, or do they have... at least we need to I know I know no, no, I'm just saying that I... Okay, I will respond to your question they still have an entitlement to vote they there you vote go. for or against okay so my question thank you this is very complicated 
Okay, no. so I'll let the clerk read the motion so we can understand it. Call it to a vote to see if we're going to have two thirds majority. Yes. Okay, so just so I'm clear, uh, you're moving this motion, Council Fisher? I'm not moving this motion. Okay, who's moving this motion? Councilor Miller and Councilor Fisher is seconding the motion. So the motion is identical to the one that was read earlier, which is for the facilitator and myself to seek a process by which uh, a um, the field can be narrowed or a tie broken in the selection of a Ward 7 uh, candidate with the exception that the date is changed to the 15th of June. Out of uh, eight, it would be six. You know what? Uh, okay, I'm in favor. What did know, you do? I'm sorry. You know, people are asking questions. It's being directed to the chair, and other people are answering and trying to get control and understand what's going on. So, two thirds of eight plus eight, then have your answer. <laughs> what? Sorry, it's not a recording. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, so those in favor of one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> All members are still in the pool to get elected for the Senate. Um, you want to? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. Well, sorry. No, I want to make sure everyone understood the answer. So, the answer, the uh, information of Mr. Bell Chamber. When Koshi Brody stated. You still have six applicants. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. It's a now regular return because I might do have teenagers running around. Which, which <laughs> uh, you yeah. are entitled to a motion to adjourn. Well, are we going to wait? No, no, I no, no, no. My, my question. If you don't, I can do it. Okay. You know what? I don't what is motion to adjourn. Of course, the first was the second term of our lease. It's moved by Council Fisher, seconded by Council Lees, and I can it is all the bylaw number 2022-55 being a bylaw of the West Nipissing Municipality to confirm the proceedings of council. At this meeting held on the 9th of June 2022 should come into force and take effect on the day this past. Okay, I would just ask members <coughs> not to interrupt the proceedings. Okay, we have to fill in the meeting. And uh, for the public to understand before concluding, we will be reconvening June 15th. Uh, to be able to continue with this process. Same time, Anna. Okay. Same time. I have a discussion to be held this time, and you'll be notified by the other. Are we voting on the bylaw to confirm the proceedings? We're still voting to adjourn. Okay. Well, those, we have, okay. <laughs> those in favor to adjourn, carried. Second by the Senate Calvary, resolved that the meeting of council is adjourned.